Hello, folks. Steve Lentz here with Discover Options. Welcome to this presentation of the Inside Wire. It is September 26, 2017. Presented material is for educational purposes only and should not be construed as personalized financial advice. Past results are not necessarily indicative of future performance. So we're continuing today with our best practices broken wing butterfly. Today is part three of this series and we'll do a quick review of um, really the, the, the initial position. Last week we reviewed one portion of adjustments. Today we will do another one and um, we'll see where we're at here, okay? Here we go. Click Click, there we go. All right, so we're calling this best practices broken wing because there are many different approaches to trading out of the money put broken wing butterflies uh, in the way they're initiated and in the way that they are adjusted. And various uh, uh, educators and researchers out there have, have promoted and are introducing uh, new concepts along this line all the time. And really, it, 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 and for good reason, because the expected returns are, are fairly decent uh, on these. It, it, you know, when you look at the bell curve of possible price outcomes, the uh, risk graphs do a great job of covering a strong portion of the possible price outcomes. And so here's what we came in for a landing on uh, in regards to this. So um, you were days to expiration. And by the way, our very own Frank Fay, he trades this approach and has been trading this approach for years and way before a lot of the big hype hit from uh, you know that's out there on the web and we've been at this a long you know quite a bit longer than most people um, but let's just go through this this is it's uh, it's very interesting days to expiration this is put on roughly between 60 and 85 days out and interestingly enough, when you look at Trade Finder, and I think we've did, done this before, Trade Finder Condors, and you just give it, uh, and you're, you're going out 30 days, it'll gravitate towards, uh, you know, uh, option expiration 60 to 85 days out in the future. Uh, it does not gravitate towards the uh, uh, near month where they might have 30 days left. It goes out more distantly when you're looking at that T plus 30 line to get the best expected return with the lowest standard deviation. Um, that's the date to expiration range it typically goes. And so that was kind of interesting. So here's what we came up with. To initiate a best practices broken wing, we put on a, a short put as closest to a negative 30 delta as we can get it. Then we go further out of the money for the long put, and we're going to go 5% additional farther, you know, uh, you know, 5% of the index, we're using the S&Ps, we're going to go 5% more out of the money from that 30 delta and set up our most distant out of the money long put at half the contract size, of course. And then when we go to the at or in the money long put at half the contracts of the short, that is what we call our delta adjuster strike. And and uh, we, we go to the strike that you know, gives us the uh, most balanced deltas closest to zero. Now, in all of this, we're going to try and favor 25-point strikes when possible. The open interest typically is better at those uh, strike locations, and uh, executions are easier and, and, you know, with tighter, tighter spreads. The entry debit, ideally we want it to be less than 5% of the initial capital required. Uh, that means uh, on a $10,000 requirement, you want the debit to be under $500. And we're going to walk into risk typically. Um, that is, we scale in. Now, on the one portion I'm going to show you today, we're not doing that. Well, we're scaling in in a certain manner, but a little, we're, we're not just putting on another broken wing. So let's go and take a look at an example here. Here's an example from high implied volatility environment. Just a quick example. We go to the um, strike that has a 30 delta. This happens to be at a 25-point uh, strike, which is kind of convenient. We then go 5% of the index further out of the money down here. This takes us to the 1925. It actually took us to the 1920. We round down to the, rounded down to the 1925. That left us with a delta of positive 224. 
0.8. Now we have to go further up towards the add and out of them, the add and in the money puts, find the strike that a five will get us closest to being delta neutral. And in this case, we went to the 2090s. That got us down to a delta of minus 2.2. And then the debit here uh, was well under the 5% threshold of that initial requirement. Now, when you graphically analyze this, oh, you want to make sure that the um, ideally you're using a volatility input up here that is uh, equal to uh, a, a process that we talked about in the May 23rd inside wire from this year. And we basically take the at the money, implied volatility, plug it in there, then we go to the first strike outside the first standard deviation and we resubstitute that value up in here. And they get, that gives us a more uh, uh, accurate expected downside move. And that's the value we want plugged in there just to be consistent time after time. All right, so when we analyze this, this is what we get. And um, uh, you'll note the positive expected return over here which is, which is kind of nice. Here we're going out 40 days. But what we do is, is and I showed this comparison previous, and this, these are just the same screenshots, and we're just ripping through this. We're going to go out 30 days, and when we analyze this, we can see that we have a positive expected return and a certain standard deviation of those possible outcomes. But when we compare the best practices to the other approaches to doing this, we could see some favorable uh, uh, statistics stacking up. So we looked at the Rhino, the Road Trip, and the Kevlar. Those are all available in the, you know, just out there in the, uh, and it's it's free to examine what those approaches are. But what we discovered when we compared doing this both in a high implied volatility environment and a low IV percentile environment, the best practices had a positive expected return and then the lowest standard deviation the lowest standard deviation of, of the other three. Now, the Kevlar in a low vol environment did have a higher expected return, but a much, much higher standard deviation as well. So the best practices uh, stacks up real well against these other approaches, no question. Now, what do you do when the market begins to go up? And that was our topic for last week, and it's also our topic for this week. And last week, we examined the notion of scaling in with a second put butterfly in the same fashion as our first one. And then after that, uh, what do you do? Well, you would, you, when we examined all three of these approaches, doing a reverse Harvey, buying a call, or rolling the short. And so these were the subjects of last week's presentation. What I want to do today is go over this item here simply adding an out-of-the-money call-side butterfly. So on an upside move, what do you do? We Instead of scaling in with another put butterfly, we're going to go to the call side and put on a call-side butterfly. And so here's an example from February 8th. This is just before the market begins to blast off to the upside. All right, just before it begins to completely blast off, and here we begin with uh, our, our trade put on near the close of February 8th. And lo and behold, um, a few trading days later, it takes off to the upside. And uh, we now need to do something at that point. What do we do? Well, last time we talked about adding a whole nother one of these butterflies and creating a different picture. But this time, what we're going to do is look at Part three here is simply adding an out-of-the-money call side butterfly. And so here are the parameters for us to do that. All right. If we go to the calls, we put on our long, our initial long at an at-the-money strike level. Now this is where you kind of have to start using the, uh, uh, you know, clicking the uh, analyze button and just kind of playing around with the distances here. But the short strike, all right, I'm saying to be located between a 30 and 40 delta, somewhere in that range, because in the calls, you're going to have um, uh, fewer strikes separating the deltas 
if that makes sense, as opposed to the puts. Uh, you're going to have deltas jumping up quicker in the calls as opposed to down to the puts, where it seems that it takes forever to go from, say, a, a 20 to a 10 or a 30 to a 20. Here, you're going to jump rather quickly from 30 to 40. And so we're just looking at that range. And once we put on that long at the money, we go to the short strike and propose that, and then we use the final most distance out of the money long strike as, again, our delta adjuster. And I should have put in here in parentheses of the whole position in total. Okay, so we look at the whole position and use that as our delta adjuster to flatten the whole campaign out as best as we can to delta neutral. In all of this, we're rounding to 25 point strikes when possible. All right, and we're not going to use the same contract size as the first butterfly. We'll use half or less, half or less. So let's look at an example here. In that case, the market went up. And here, our first step is to go to the at or near the money calls. And here we have a 2330 would be closest to being at the money. If we go slightly in the money by three points, we're at the 2325. And that's a 25 point strike. So we gravitate to that. Now we did a five lot before in the puts. And now we're going to do a two lot butterfly here. So we put on a two lot there. And then we go to somewhere between 30 and 40 out here. OK. And again, we're going to try and gravitate to the 25 point strikes if we can. So we go to the 32 delta over here for the four lot. And then after that, we're left with deltas uh, equivalent to where we need to go out, and as it turns out, we went to the 24 tens located, you know, you know, way up here. And when we put this on, this is what the risk graph looks like then. All right, and what it features is you're you're you're, you're flattening the deltas here, okay? But you're you know we're going about out 34 days. When you look at the midpoint here, you can see that we're way out. Our break even is way beyond a standard deviation to the downside. Our break even out here is above above a stand, beyond a standard deviation to the upside. And uh, we have a positive expected return, and it's looking good. You have a nice flat line here at T plus 34, and not too bad. Now let me see what the next slide is. Here I'm showing just uh, 30 days out, 30 days out, and we can see that we're starting out at the red line where we're leaning delta short here. And by making this adjust, by putting on another butterfly, we're then lowering the left side here, but in exchange, we're creating this marginal distance between the green and the red line on the upside. And we're also flattening our deltas to pretty much flat. Now on the downside, if the market begins going down real quick, looks like we could get in trouble. It just depends how much time, but you can see that it kicks in pretty quick. So the market over 30 days would have to go down well over standard deviation at that higher IV projected level there. All right. So that is an approach to do that works out well. Now, what do we do after that if the market keeps going up? If it keeps going, now, the, the, if it goes back down, we'll address that later in subsequent parts. But we're talking about if the market just blasts off to the upside, what do we do next? And at this point, the, we'll just use this tent as a trigger point. When it hits the short strike right there, that'll be our next trigger. Okay, we're, we're Somewhere between that 30 and delta point, 30 and 40 delta, if the market keeps going up and hits that uh, uh, short strike on that added butterfly, then what do we do? Okay, so let's go and what happened in this case is that on March 1st, right at the open, it gapped up and went beyond that point right there, that break even, that um, uh, uh, the, the, the short strike. It gapped, it was underneath it, it never did hit it, and then in one night, it gapped through it, and there we are, pretty much making no money, maybe a few hundred dollars. And now it's time to do something. What do you do? 
What do you do at this point? Well, there's two things you can do. This is coming from best practices um, in examining how others treat this thing and what the best ones are, at least in the way it graphically analyzes. So here are two things you can do. One, you can condorize that call butterfly with another call butterfly, and I'll show you an example in a sec. The other thing is that reverse Harvey uh, of the put butterfly. Let's examine both of these so we just have a good understanding what to do at this point. And these are some good tools just to kind of uh, put in your arsenal. Uh, you know, when the, mar when the market blasts off to the upside, these are two good things to keep in mind if you put on a call butterfly. How can we condorize that call butterfly? So instead of what that means is, is we are going to, now let me just erase this. To condorize this, we're going to take this, you know, this spread here and here. We're basically going to roll it out further upside, you know, uh, you know, further up. So we're going to peel off half of these shorts and roll them up. Okay, and in fact, we're going to, as you'll notice, we're going to basically... Um, uh, uh, let me just show you how we do this. We put on another butterfly, but we put our four lot right at that distant strike of that initial call butterfly right there. Look at that. So, um, by but we're, 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 what are we going to end up with? Okay, we're going to take do a two a, a two lot butterfly. And what, what, what we'll end up with is a minus 2 down here at the 23.75, a minus 2. Okay. Then we're going to come up here, and what will we have at this 24.10? We'll have a minus 2 right here. Okay. And then we'll have a positive 2 here. So do you see how we now have a condor? Okay. A minus 2 lot here, a minus 2 lot here. We have a plus 2 there. And then down in the um, uh, our initial butterfly, which was this one, we had a two lot way down there, which was initially at the uh, just slightly in the money. Okay, so let's run this, and this is what we end up with. We're basically peeling off half of the short and rolling it out to here. So we're condorizing the call side, and um, by doing that. We're balancing the deltas. We're uh, keeping. We're rolling out the uh, expiration break even from from here to here, and uh, we're we're staying in the game that way. We're staying in the game, and, uh, and so that's and then, you know you can see our T plus zero line extends really. It's a flat wide area here. Not too bad. Not too bad at all. Now, that's one approach. Now another thing you can do is the reverse Harvey, and it's named after Dan Harvey, who was a mentoring student of ours, what, probably 10 years ago or so. And he's gone on to do some, some real nice things of publishing and uh, advisory work, and uh, he's, he's quite the premium seller. Uh, and and his, one of his adjustments he came up with was taking this put-side butterfly and if you go to the longs here, here's the original put side butterfly, and I'm skipping strikes in this matrix. But by rolling these longs inward towards the short, okay, by rolling them inwards towards the short, you can do that at a net credit. So let's go and look at this. We're doing a bull put spread here by peeling this off and rolling it down. We're doing this for a credit of a buck forty-five. You see that? Then we come down to the more distance, and if we're going to roll this one up towards the short strike, we do this for a net debit of nineteen cents. So if you have a debit of nineteen cents and a credit of a buck forty-five, you then have a total net credit of about what a buck. Um, uh, 24, something like that. So that is then going to lift the whole picture of the call side butterfly up. So when you look at this carefully, you can see how we're rolling in 
This original butterfly, the blue is the, we're going to roll this strike in. We're going to roll this strike in toward the short. And in so doing that, we're getting that credit. That's going to lift then the right side up. You'll see that the we're moving from the blue line up to the green. Let me zero in on this. You can kind of get a better picture here. Here you go. We're rolling. This is one of the strikes we're rolling in. And in so doing, we're collecting that buck 24, and that's raising us from the blue line up to the green. See that? And if you keep doing a reverse Harvey, taking those in, theoretically, this green line can then eventually rise above the zero break even line. And as the market keeps going up, you just reverse Harvey this thing all the way down, and you just keep zzz, zzz, and you keep just lifting that thing up from the zero break even line like that. As far as the, as much as the market goes up, you just keep reverse Harving it, and um, you can kind of keep things delta neutralish, and, uh, uh, and and then you know, that way the upside isn't going to kill you so bad, which is really the bane of a lot of butterfly traders is these big upside moves. And this is just one way of alleviating that. Let's zoom in a little bit to this, uh, just this little reverse Harvey thing. And we're beginning with, we're leaning delta short. And here's a T plus 30 on our existing position. And by reverse Harveying this thing, we are delta, you know, balancing this to uh, delta neutral or so. And we're lifting this thing up right there so our theta goes up a little bit as well. So we're increasing our theta a squeege as well as balancing the deltas. And uh, you know we have a lot more room to keep balancing uh, through more and more. Uh, and, and as the market keeps climbing up, we could do more and more reverse Harveys and keep you know raising our theta and uh, keeping it delta balanced that way. Now this doesn't preclude, let's see, that was it. Now, you could do a combination of both, of course. You can uh, uh, condorize it first and then do a reverse Harvey. Okay, that would be one thing to consider, um, is that you can uh, you know, run this condor, and as the market keeps going up at that point, you then start reverse Harving it. After it keeps going up to here, you're way over, you know, now you reverse Harvey this in and lift that red line straight up. That might be a good plan as well, okay? And, uh, and so what we're going to do now is eventually, and I'm going to confer with Frank, is come in for a landing on our, our back testable rules, but I'm just exploring the uh, best practices adjustment. We'll come up with a specific order and parameter set for pulling the trigger on this as we uh, do some back testing work, okay? All right, any questions, comments? I certainly appreciate Brian and... Jim joining us live here today. I know a number of people watch the recording. and It's uh, great that you do so. And uh, uh, Actually, this is going to replace the butterfly approach that we have in our mentoring curriculum. All right. Super. Folks, thanks so much for joining us. We will talk to you later. Have a great rest of the week. Bye-bye.